Good evening. I'm Francesco Ibrisi. I'm an architect. I live and work in Milano since 2005. Uh, what I'm going to show you tonight is what is behind my work, actually. The man you see there, we can call it a sort of self-portrait with a polyhedron helmet, but actually is a metaphor, one of the few paradoxes I'm going to show you tonight, in which I show that my work is dealing with what's around our inner landscape. So, what is looking inside this man is what I design with my job. What you see here is some of the interior I have done in Milan in these years. Some exhibitions. The Italian Pavilion at Biennale di Venezia and some others. But what I'm going to talk tonight is not showing my some slides of my job. Matt, try to talk, trying to talk with you about how, what I learned from my job. And it's learning how to live with paradoxes and getting joy through paradoxes. Uh, joy is a state of mind, is a peculiar condition in which you can feel sort of happiness. And paradox is a logic category, is putting together two very far statements and this distance is almost at the opposite poles of reality. But what fight against paradox is very often only the common sense. So uh, starting with the, the first project, what you see there is the Italian flag. Uh, maybe you know this year is the 150th birthday of the unified Italy. And all around Italy, there's a sort of national fever. Anybody is caring about the flag, about the nation in a way has never experienced before. So you have parades. All the monuments are colored with the Italian flag. You can see the uh, president participated to some commemorative parades. And you can see how anyone is trying to celebrate this national birthday. And here you see a private, private transportation for adults or for children. So these are 150 years or, of unified nation. But this year, the coincidence is that 1,500,000 people are going to cross the Mediterranean Sea to reach the European coasts. The revolution, all of you know in this period, are bringing into another direction, into a new reality, what at the moment are just migrants, but what are, which are going to become 1,500,000 new citizens, in which way our cities are going to react? What is a city with new citizens? In which way the future can deal with the past? So the first paradox I'm going to explore with a simple project I show you tonight is that future in some condition can be equivalent with the past, and that is eternity. So the project I show you is forever, and are just three postcards about Palermo. I was invited to an exhibition in Torino to speak about a city with three postcards. And the city I was asked to, to speak about was Palermo just because I'm from Palermo, even if I live in Milano since 10 years. So what you see here is a, an historical postcard of the future of Palermo, in which the Teatro Massimo shares the skyline with the Pyramid of Keop. Could look some weird. This is the Sphinx in front of Teatro Massimo. But if you think that the Egyptian monuments are part of the European landscape since ever, if you go to Paris, you can find some pyramid or obelisk. So as you go in Rome, the Baroque city was built with focus points that are, they were using Mediterranean monuments. So here you see Porta Felice merge with the Ramses II temple. Uh, what is this project talking about? It's just saying how to turn a paradox into joy. It's just saying that a city that is able to change its consolidated image can face social and ethnic difference. The second project I show you is a competition I participated in 2009. Uh, it was about um, bike sharing in Copenhagen. 
Copenhagen is a very famous city for its style life, and Copenhagers are very proud of it. There is a sort of evolution line in which Copenhagen are aware of their vision that is about a metropolis that is built for people. The quality of life in that city is the image of the city itself in the world. So uh, some parts of the rules of the competition were like saying that uh, mm, the transportation, the bike transportation in the city is already something that made Copenhagen unique in the world. So Copenhagen, Copenhagen er, people from Copenhagen want, are the ones who invented bike sharing first, and they already are the second generation bike sharing, and they were making an international call and competition asking the world community of designers to design bike sharing generation three. But actually, uh, what they were asking was really not talking about the third generation of bike, in my opinion, because they were asking just for a new model of bike. There was a special prize for the best design bike, and they were asking for a new system able to improve the number of bikes and the way you could share in the city. But inside the rules and the documents with the competition was written this sentence that the citizens of Copenhagen are 500,000 people and there are almost 600,000 bicycles. Why don't you just share your bikes? If you, are, if you have more bikes than people, why do you want to improve the number of bikes in the city with a new design bike? So the idea of the competition was just using this paradox. Why don't you ask something to the community of citizens before asking something to the community of designers? So the bike sharing system 3.0 that we proposed was not a bike, there was no bike parking, was just stickers. You can have a label where it was written free and anyone could participate and be the bike sharing 3.0, just patching the sticker on his own bike. That means that if the 2.0 was a bike, the 3.0 is you. And is everywhere. 560,000 bikes all around the city. If only one person out of 100 of the citizens of Copenhagen would accept to share one of his own bikes, in the city, the city could immediately, without any investment, have 5,600 bikes, immediately. And at the moment, the biggest number of bikes in a city is 2,000. So, bike sharing 3.0 for us was you, was the community, was everyone. And there is no perfect bike. The, the idea of finding the, per finding the perfect object for anyone belongs to the last century. There is no best bike than yours. And there is no schedule because you just leave your bikes wherever you want. There's no thief. There's no probability of robbing your bike because you can just have another one and another one and another one just because of this red label that is very simple and anyone can use a patch in his own bike. So, the second paradox is generating a second kind of joy. And the joy is that a society that is able to change its own behavior does not necessarily need new technologies and investment to evolve. I go to the third paradox, and it's the end. I was asked for this Salon del Mobile this year to design the kitchen of the future. A very good friend of mine, Stefano Mirti, asked me, let's make a design contest. You are the one going to design the kitchen of the future. Great. And I ask, uh, okay, uh, when is it going to be in 20 days? Mm. And who's going to pay? You. Okay, so the kitchen of the future for me was just a fire. And again, in some conditions, the future can be equivalent to the past. And this is a kind of eternal way of approaching to the project. But a fire implies horizontal and vertical relations. Horizontal and is the kitchen itself, how people gather and meet around the fire. What can you prepare on a fire? But there is also certain structures that can use the energy of the fire to be uh, generated, some architectonical structure. The first that came in my mind, starting thinking about the kitchen of the future, was the Montgolfier, the first Montgolfier hot air balloon by the Montgolfier brothers. And this is the engraving of 1783 showing the first flight over the sky of Paris. And suddenly this image came in my mind and was the Montgolfier barbecue. This was 
the kitchen we were showing to the Salon del Mobile this year, and was just uh, joy uh, in a paradox. Was just a street food show. Was not a new design kitchen. Was just uh, addressed to gather a certain number of designers to a certain date with the maximum level of join that could be shared. So I will show you very quickly paradox. In effect, it's just monosphere and barbecue. And here you see the design team in my studio starting designing the hot air balloon and the barbecue. The hot air balloon and the barbecue. So you see the first very raw and small paper hot air balloon and on the other side you see the evolution of the barbecue. Here you see how happy we were when the first balloon really flew over a simple burner and here is, we are trying to set up the barbecue. Here is a bigger hot air balloon just for the success of the small one and here is the almost the final version of the barbecue. The final version of the hot air balloon and the final version of the barbecue. And in the meantime, there was Chen Shi that was stamping some paper bags for what we were going to cook. There was pizza inside. And the chef, Patrick, was preparing the first pizza. So now the final test was to try to understand if the pizza could be cooked inside our barbecue. And it worked. It was a very good pizza. So this was the end of prototyping. And this, if the pizza was OK and the balloon was flying, was OK, ready for the race. And this was the main event in Milano for the Salon del Mobile before the official flight. The, first, the last test for pizza and the last test for the balloon. As you see, it's really flying and there is a big excitement all around. In the meantime, the, Mongol, the, the balloon was flying. The chef was still preparing pizza. We prepared 500, 500 pizzettas in a very, very small oven. And of course, the best part was the pizza. People getting crazy if they were lost in their turn to get the pizza. As you see, it was a very successful event for the number of people who were there and the kind of joy that could be shared. And the result of this very simple balloon was one month of working of a group of 10 designers from all the world. In this picture, you see five nations, Canada, Croatia, Iran, and Italy, trying to check if everything was OK and laughing in the meanwhile. So the third joy is that to participate, to create public events, generates a condition of intense joy that is shared. Thank you very much.